Welcome to the Radio Electronics School. You're doing the Foundation Theory course and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing interference. Interference for the Foundation operator, or should I say the scope of interference in the assessment for the Foundation operator, is not deep. I'm going to endeavour here to cover everything you need to know for your Foundation assessment but I feel compelled to tell you a little bit more because uh, almost every amateur radio station at one stage or another does suffer from interference to their own equipment or to the neighbour's equipment and you may have to deal with this and a little bit of extra knowledge, not much, above the foundation uh, will assist you, I hope. This slide shows a amateur radio station and pictorially at least anyway, next door we've got his or her neighbour. Uh, the neighbour has a television antenna and notice it's pointing away from the amateur which is, which is good, the TV antenna is pointing in that direction, ripper. Uh, they've also got an amplifier on the, the mast <clears throat> and of course there's power lines connecting power to the neighbour and those power lines also come into your station. And this neighbour has a number of household appliances. They've got a stereo sound system. They've got a, well, probably a 5.1 channel sound system. They've got a clock radio, they've got a computer, uh, they've got a TV of course, and they've got a telephone. In Australia, devices that are non-radio devices such as computers, clock radios, sound systems and telephones, they are required to meet certain electromagnetic compatibility, compatibility standards. That means these devices are required to meet certain minimum standards so that they can live uh, jointly in an environment with a radio transmitter. Clock radios are not supposed to pick up amateur transmissions on 14 megahertz. Sound systems are not supposed to pick up radio frequency signals. Neither are telephones or computers. Power lines are not supposed to conduct radio frequency energy, but they do. So we're going to talk about <coughs> uh, these types of problems briefly for the foundation and uh, what you might do and how you might go about uh, fixing some interference problems. I'll just give you one tip as an amateur radio operator. The important thing as far as interference for an amateur station is that you cause no interference to your own equipment. If you're causing interference to your own equipment, fix it. Find out what's wrong and fix it and use some of the techniques that I might describe here for you. Let's have a look at the ways that radio energy can get into non-radio devices or even radio devices from an amateur station. You could think of this home as you like as your own home because the best place to experiment with interference suppression is your own home. If you can get all the interference away from your own station, should there ever be a problem in the future and an inspector comes to uh, look at your station, uh, if he or she sees that there's no interference on your own TV, radio or entertainment equipment, then that pretty well gives your station a clean bill of health. Let's have a look at how radio waves... It, we're going to presume that the radio transmitter is not faulty at this stage. So how could a radio signal get into this equipment? It could be radiated. A radiated signal could get into this amplifier on the TV and overload it. That would cause interference. Radiation could go straight to the TV antenna and cause interference. We want to locate our, t our uh, amateur radio antenna as far away as possible from the TV antenna of your neighbour or your own. If you have a directional antenna, uh, you would avoid pointing that antenna in the direction of your neighbour's antenna if there was an interference problem you would point it the opposite direction or some other direction. But you certainly wouldn't point a directional antenna at a TV antenna or even the neighbour's house 
if there was a, an interference problem. The other way that interference can get into is, is oh, well, there's more radiation. We can get direct radiation into sound systems, telephones, clock radios and computers. That's, that's direct radiation. They have leads. The speakers have leads on them. The telephone has a lead on it. The clock radio has a lead on it. The computer has leads and speakers and all sorts of nonsense on it. Those leads and things can pick up radio frequency energy and conduct it to one of these devices and that would cause interference. So there's radiated interference and the last one that we're going to be discussing anyway is conducted interference. You are connected to the power lines at your place, your neighbour's connected to the power lines. It's possible, for example, for radio frequency energy to enter the power, the power line system and go into your neighbour's home that way. And your neighbour's home has lots of household electrical wiring. There's wires going up and down walls. Imagine seeing the house invisible and just seeing the wiring in the house. There's an awful lot of wiring there and that's like a big antenna and your amateur transmission can be picked up by that wiring and conducted to one of these devices. That's conducted interference. So there's radiated interference and conducted interference. If your transmitter is faulty, no matter what you do here, you won't be able to fix the problem. If your transmitter is radiating harmonics, harmonics are multiples of your transmit frequency. So, for example, if your neighbour liked watching uh, VHF Channel 29, uh, sorry, VHF Channel 9, and you were operating on the 10 metre band, then I think it's about the uh, fifth harmonic or whatever, but one of the harmonics of the 10 metre band falls straight on VHF channel 9. Now if that were to happen to you, the problem is the transmitter. There's nothing you can do here to fix harmonic or any other spurious radiation. Spurious radiation is radiation that comes from your transmitter that shouldn't. And it can come out on television frequencies. Spurious radiation. <coughs> Well, let's assume for a moment, though, that the transmitter is 100% OK and we're getting some interference with these devices. What would, it be, what would we do about it? When you're dealing with interference problems with neighbours, it's very important that you be diplomatic, that you apply di diplomacy. You, you, if, the, if your neighbour comes to you and says, hey, look, I, I'm getting interference on my TV set, it wouldn't be very very diplomatic to say, well, you know, too bad, mate, I've got a licence to use my amateur station. Uh, that's only going to uh, put the neighbour offside and increase your uh, probability of being able to deal with interference problems in the future in a friendly manner. So be very, very careful. I'm going to presume that this is your own home and you're trying to fix your own interference. Let's say you're getting interference on your sound system. Well, your best friend is the RF choke. The RF choke is just a ferrite rod about 10 millimetres in diameter and about, uh, calculating it out, trying to do it in millimetres, I think it's about 200 millimetres long and about 10 millimetres diameter. You can use a shorter piece if you want to. And an RF choke is formed just by winding a cable around the RF around the ferrite rod and holding it in place with cable ties. <coughs> so you don't have to cut any wires, you just have to grab a wire and wind it around the RF choke and hold it in position. So suppose the sound system was getting interference. Well, the sound system has an amplifier and on the back of the amplifier there are speaker leads. Many of them sometimes. If you install an RF choke in this position here, right next to the amplifier, put that in, put an RF choke in there, and the way you do that, you simply get a ferrite rod, 
and you get some of the loose speaker cable that's left over and you wind it around that ferrite rod. In fact, you can wind up all the loose speaker cable if you want and then you go to the speaker. And that RF shake, and, and, and with a greater than high than 90% probability that will cure sound system interference. The same applies to the telephone. The telephone has a lead which goes into the wall socket. If a telephone is getting interference, stick an RF choke on it close to the phone up here and wind the telephone lead around the ferrite rod. Same thing with the clock radio. Computer, just wind a ferrite rod around the power lead of the clock radio. Speakers uh, of computers are notorious for picking up uh, radio frequency energy because they don't have any RF filtering as a rule and it's the same technique as we used here. On both speakers or you can get one rod and wind the two speaker cables around the ferrite rod and, and more than nine times out of ten that'll stop any problem that you have. If the interference has been picked up by the mains and conducted into the neighbour's premises, you may have to install at your station what's known as a mains filter. It's a, it's a low pass filter that passes the main, so if you're getting radiation that's going into your home and that's being conducted by the power lines to your neighbour and causing interference, you could try a mains filter or you could simply try winding ferrite rod around all the leads of your station. Um, my call sign's VK2DQ and I've got a reasonably good station and I've got ferrite rods everywhere. I don't have any interference, I didn't want to have any interference, so I've got ferrite rods on my red and black power leads from my power supply, uh, rods on my speaker leads, I've got a number of external speakers for my station, all of those have got ferrite rods. I've got ferrite rods on the coaxial cable before they go out the, the uh, exit to the antenna. I've got ferrite rods everywhere because they really are your friend. Um, if a TV amplifiers can be a really big problem. Um, when people live in a, a weak s signal area, they have to put a booster amplifier on their mast. It's called a masthead amplifier. It goes about there. Uh, some of these can be overloaded very easily by amateur radio transmissions. How you will know that is by your own TV. Look at your own TV, and if you don't have any interference on your own TV, then you don't have a harmonic or spurious problem. Such a problem like that would probably have to be fixed with a high pass filter and that high pass filter would be inside at the back of the TV set. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down here, it's not part of your foundation syllabus. Because TV frequencies are generally higher than amateur radio frequencies. So if we had an amateur transmitter with nothing wrong with it just simply being too strong for this amplifier, we would install a high pass filter in the house on the back of the TV. Finally, if you've done everything that you can do, or your neighbour's just not cooperating with you, you've reduced your power, you've restricted your operating times, you've pointed your antenna away from him, you've fitted filters to your own equipment, he won't let you fit filters to your equipment, or indeed you may not want to fit filters to his equipment or her equipment. Remember some of these household appliances can cost many thousands of dollars and if you go over there and fit a filter uh, with the pure intent of assisting your neighbour, and then two or three days later that TV breaks down, well guess who's going to get the blame? So sometimes it really is best to do everything you can perfectly in your own home. Uh, and if the neighbour doesn't cooperate, the one who's experiencing the interference, make sure first of all that you have no interference on your own equipment and then your next responsibility as an amateur radio operator is to contact the Australian Communications and Media Authority, which is the website up on the slide now, and they have a form which they'll send you to fill out and your neighbour, and they will come and investigate the problem. But they will charge a small fee, I believe, uh, but not against you if they don't find a problem with your station. 
That's interference for the foundation licence. Thanks for your attention. I hope that's of some use to you. There's a lot more to do with interference. Interference is a very, very big subject, but what we've given you in this interference tutorial is the is the things that nearly always work most of the time. When you when you strike a really tough problem, talk to a more experienced radio amateur and seek some help. Cheers for now. This is Ron VK2DQ.